All right, uh, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this, but uh, I'm here with my good friend, Tommy Sobel, who is uh, the head of a really, really rad company called Brick. And the uh, point of Brick is to help people with digital wellness and help people get off of their phones and uh, be present in their lives. And Tommy and I have been working on a bunch of different Brick projects over the last year. And I thought it'd be a great time to talk to him about everything going on right now, because while uh, for the first time in a long time, social media has become totally essential for us, and it's uh, given us a chance to kind of take back uh, some of the function and the potential of the internet in a connected world. Um, and it's a lifeline for a lot of us. We're getting all of our information from it. We're getting all of our entertainment from it. We're communicating with each other. We're listening to music on it. We're watching TV shows on it. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it can it can be a lot. And uh, I wanted to ask you if you could give us some advice on some digital wellness tips uh, that everybody could use and uh, see what perspective you have from a brick uh, mindset. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Chris. Um, well, first, thanks for doing this. this is, yeah. This is going to be fun. This is fun. It's important it's right now, you know. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, we're, we're suffering from this uh viral pandemic right now in the last three weeks but for a long time now we've been suffering from what i call a digital pandemic and uh we people already were feeling so much of a sense of isolation and distance and i've kind of you know the basically mark zuckerberg's goal of connecting the world he succeeded and the problem was is people started replacing their real world relationships with these relationships on technology and the problem with that is that on on screens you can only i i, I have a uh, <laughs> real life <laughs> doorway <laughs> to people living with me but uh in, in in screens you can only get dopamine or it's it's difficult to uh uh, feel a sense of real human connection. There, there are, are solutions to that. But in general, especially on social media, you, you can really only get dopamine, which is, is like candy. It's, it's an endless searching neurochemical. You can never quite get enough. That's why we, we uh, experience that uh, sense of a loss, loss of time when we're uh, scrolling through the feed or um, we're swiping through, through dating apps. And so... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an epidemic. And I think that now that screens and our phones truly are a lifeline, maintaining a healthy balance with screens is even more essential than ever. How can we feel a sense of connection and, and purpose and using them in a way that actually makes us feel good instead of um, making us feel sleepless and stressed and anxious and iso more isolated than we already are? Um, some tips that, that immediately come to mind uh, is trying to make sure that you maintain a healthy daily ritual. Uh, and and I, I, I actually have a study on our on Brick's website where 70% of people actually check their phone first thing in the morning when they wake up because it's actually used as their alarm clock. And the problem with that when you check your phone first thing is is well you know they they used to think that when we slept our brain rested just like our body rests but what they know now is that the brain is actually just as active if not even more active when we sleep and it's it's consolidating memories it's rebalancing neurotransmitters and it's your subconscious mind is actually working to solve problems for your coming days and weeks and when you wake up, you kind of wake up in this right brain, creative, flowy state that can allow you to set an intention and, and a purpose for your day. Like, what are my top three priorities for the day? But if you reach out and you use your phone as your alarm clock, you're immediately switching out of that. And, and you see the notification flood of all of the messages and the emails and texts, which, um, you know, Ashton Kutcher says that your, your email is basically everyone else's to-do list for you. So suddenly you are uh, switching from that right brain creative space uh, 
into the left brain kind of like get shit done frame of mind and that immediately boosts cortisol levels and you're kind of reinforcing the the habit that whenever your phone has a a new notification or a ring that you're going to respond to it it's kind of reinforcing that your phone is in control of your behaviors not you and so one of the things that i've always recommended is to get a battery powered alarm clock there's like nine dollar ones on amazon that uh, one that I use that's great. And um, that allows you to put your phone and charge it in another room. Ideally, I charge my phone on my office desk in the other room, or if you can't charge your phone in another room, ideally, the most important thing is that it's at least out of arm's reach from you from bed. And so then when you wake up and you, uh, don't check your phone within the first 20 minutes. For me, I personally noticed I had much less anticipatory anxiety for my day. And I was able to set a foundation for uh, what was important for me to build positive momentum for, for a grounded positive day. So on my perfect morning, I'll wake up, I'll meditate for 20 minutes. I'll, I'll like a gratitude practice, I'll shower, I'll make coffee, I'll make breakfast, and then I'll sit down at my phone and at my computer. And that's, that's up to an hour or an hour and a half after I've started my day. And so by then I've, I've built up that positive momentum where no matter what emails or texts I have, no matter how bad the news is when I do finally check it, especially today, um, we, we, I'm able to respond more consciously and, and, and with that kind of grounded perspective. And so, so we actually have a list of habits that we call the phone smart habits, which is a template for digital wellness. And the first one is make the first hour of your day phone free. So, so that, that's, that's one tip. Um, I think also that when we, when we are in this state that we're in right now, where we're kind of, uh, attached to the news more, more than ever. I mean, even me personally, the, the news is, I mean, every day feels like a week or a month and in terms of the amount of information that's coming out. And a lot of it is really important for us to know different quarantine rules and updates and, and um, needing to make financial changes or people, you know, losing their jobs. And so it's really well, even, important. Even to... just also the, the connectivity of all of us, like there are a lot of people that are by themselves right now, and it's very important to be able to interact. So I've never used FaceTime that much before this, maybe with my wife when I was on tour, but I'm FaceTiming friends, doing Zoom calls with friends every day now. And it's that real human interaction. And it's it's some of the, the really wonderful stuff from, uh, and I, I'm hoping that this will transform how we use social media because I do think, like you said before, we're all kind of triggered by that dopamine hit. And yeah. after the 2016 election, social media just got so toxic and it's almost like an addiction for a lot of us. But I do feel like uh, there, there are ways right now where you know technology is amazing and the, the ability to connect with other humans and look you in the eyes virtually and, and talk with you is wonderful. It's a really, really nice thing, but it's finding a balance between that stuff and, and uh, you mentioned making a schedule, I was reading, and then I think it was in the New York Times or Washington Post, there was the article from the astronaut, and he talked about being in isolation on the space station and the important things and the importance of having a schedule. And I think it's great that, you know, we start off the day with some phone free time. I know personally that the first thing I do when I wake up isn't even to turn my alarm off, it's to read the Times, the Post, LA Times, and yeah. then, you know, my day begins after that. And it just feels like, you know, Groundhog Day where every day is the same. And it's like you get in fight or flight mode immediately yeah. instead of having a moment to think for yourself. And it also just feels like every day is the same as the last because you're just always in that kind of, you know, you're not, there's not a lot of routine variation at all. And so, you know, I haven't been able to meditate that much, even though I've had tons of free time. And it's because yeah. I've been ch checking for updates all the time and, you know, yeah. and then just filling every free moment of time that I had outside of that with like a YouTube clip or, you know, what's on Netflix or, you know, we've watched all of Tiger King in one day. <laughs> uh, but uh, are there any other practices that you're doing uh, with like your schedule for your day? Like how, how do you go about uh, the day with technology right now? 
you know, you mentioned that it's really important to be connected, but like, how do you balance yeah, that? Absolutely. Uh, every night before I go to bed, um, I have a notebook. It's actually, I don't have it with me right now, but I have a notebook that's used specifically for setting my three priorities for the next day. So if I, <clears throat> if I don't do that, I, uh, I actually don't sleep as well. So if you're able to know what my intention is for the following day before I go to bed, there's two, two benefits to that. One, when you sleep, you, that actually empowers your subconscious mind to start to solve the problems and work for you while you sleep. But then two, you're implanting for the whole rest of that following day, anything that you do with screens that is not in line with those three intentions, it's much easier for you to say no to. Mm -hmm. So uh, the problem is, is if we don't set very specific goals and intentions, it's very easy for us to make excuses and exceptions. Uh, oh, well, I'll just check the news real quick first thing in the morning because like I have to check the news. But if you make, mm -hmm. a, make a decision and you actually write it down, pen to paper, there's actually a behavioral link to writing things down that is able to uh, keep you in that conscious control, the, the cognitive mind. So I, I found that that's a, that, that was a game changer for me to actually set my goals for the for the next day every evening and then i'm able to be feel more in control of my screens because really if you if you do and this is you know what i did this is what so many people do like why i brought it up is if you check your phone and and you're immediately going into that fight flight stress response because you're reading this you're basically doom scrolling as, mm -hmm. as <laughs> doom scrolling is like, it. yeah yeah <laughs> which which Oof. um it's really hard not to today. Yeah. You, you, that puts you on tilt that, that being in fight flight, that stress response, um, it makes you more susceptible to your phone. You're actually reducing your cognitive capacity to say no to the unwanted behaviors. And so that's probably part of the reason why you're finding it difficult to then do these things you want to do like meditate and, yeah. and, um, if your beginning, the foundational moment of your day is, is uh, boosting your cortisol, you might then just have that stress response throughout the rest of the day. And then you're kind of feeling like that rat in the, in the cage trying to get more dopamine, uh, um, uh, more articles and more YouTube videos. I need more information. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a reactionary state of mind uh, that, that prevents, and it, it's, it's impulsive. And prevents an ability to to have choice. So what we actually teach in in this program that I teach called the Brick Method, it, it allows you the ability to have a choice for you to decide when you want to use screens. How can you use screens in a way that makes you feel good and can allow you to stay informed, but not? Um, yeah, we all have guests. Should he come in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Lilu. Uh, how's it going? I just got a cat four days ago. Our animals have never been happier. <laughs> like, yeah, constant seriously. attention, twenty-four hours a day. This yeah. is the best. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that also helps. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. Like today, we made the conscious choice not to watch TV for the first time since we've been locked in, and all of a sudden, it just seems like you have so much more time in the day because you, you, it's kind of like road hypnosis. Like you're going at fifty-five miles an hour, and the, everything's spinning by you but days kind of blend into each other and it, it's great for kind of passing the time, but it takes all of your, your kind of spark out of you. And it just, you know, yeah. you, you become a spectator in life and uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's really good to hear you talk about proactive things that you can do. Cause I think that, you know, all of us are kind of stuck in our houses right now. We don't have a lot of options. We don't have the ability to socialize. I'm a super extroverted person. And right now, you know, I've got my wife and my animals, but like I'm used to being with hundreds of people. And it's uh, yeah. it's it's interesting to figure out how to, you know, feel of service and, and to feel connected with people, but not be addicted to that and not be checking your Facebook feed or your Instagram streams or, you know, trying to figure out ways to help. I've had some really wonderful experiences. I talked to 
an ER doc in New York and just got the kind of what's going on at the, the front line. And it was amazing to be able to sit and talk over video with the doctor who works at Presbyterian in New York and hear about what their challenges are. Um, and that's, you know, like really informative. But at the same time, I probably updated my Google News feed 6,000 times today. Yeah. And it's always on in the background in my computer, in my studio. And, you know, it's, it's learning that we have agency. I think we always talk about this. It's like the agency to be able to filter it and to be able to use it. It's a very valuable thing right now, but not let it use you and not let it yeah. control your autonomic, your, your endocrine system, you know, your, your, all of your hormones and stuff and, and brain chemistry are being triggered by these digital yeah. devices. And if you don't, act consciously about that they can kind of control you and yeah and uh put you in a kind of uh, manic state yeah and for news specifically right now uh as we're talking about it two of the things that we that that i recommend or, or two tips and tricks specifically with checking the news is is one you want to check rational balanced news you know breaking news is notorious for being uh, incorrect. And so if you, I actually have a list of resources that, that I consider to be less uh, fear mongering and panic focused. It doesn't have that hyperbole and hysteria that puts you into the fight flight, but still allow you, it allows you to be informed. It's, it's the rational, more balanced publications. So you want to be checking those because when you check the ones that are completely, um, uh, uh, you know, yell, sensationalized, it puts you into that fight flight that's very difficult to get out of. And then two, you want to limit the total amount of times that you check the news a day because the news is, um, you know, you, you, you really only need to check it. I mean, how many, how many times do you need to check the news to feel, to feel informed? And so, if yeah, can... I, I, I talk to my wife about that all the time where I check that it doesn't benefit me at all to know 15 minutes before everybody else, a certain fact, it's still, you know, we're still stuck in our houses. We're still, there's a lot of things that we can do. It's good to be informed, but knowing about it and then see, reading the same story 30 times where it's still going to be there at five o'clock, you know, or later on. Um, yeah. And it, I think that we're feeling we're feeling like there's very little that we can control right now. And there's a lot of unknowns. And so keeping up to date on the news, I think for a lot of people makes us feel like there's a semblance of control. We at least know uh, what's happening. We can explain what we know to others at the lunch table, at the dinner table. I think that there- And to ourselves, you know, like just yeah, being we like- can, We can rationalize or better understand our, our, our fears or our feelings. Um, but I think that there's a really high diminishing return on that. And so if you can limit your checking the news to just twice a day, like at the end of my morning routine is when I do it. And then an hour before, at least an hour before bed, but I, I think an hour before checking out for the night. So if you're going to check out to take a bath or read a book or hang out with your partner, um, an hour, you don't want to do it right before bed either. So, so I've got a question for you for professionals like myself that, uh, you know, outside of social media and the news, I have to be in front of a computer screen most of the day for a music production or a video production or whatever. I've got a lot of friends that are, especially in LA, there's a lot of people in the gig economy that, that you know, make your livelihood on your computers. Um, do you have any exercises for people that need to do work on the computer to take breaks or, or things that you can do during the day to kind of uh, maintain a balance, especially when we can't, be outside the house and I mean we can go for walks and stuff but yeah um like a, a recommendation for how to stay focused or just best, best practices like so say I'm working on a remix or something and I've got you know six hours of work time in front of my computer do, do you have any recommendations for breaking that up or best practices for you know video editors or people that are at home right now who might have been working at a studio before, but now are working at home, and they're in front yeah. of their screens all day. Yeah, I mean, for one, the, I think one thing that for those of us where it's new to be working at home, we often uh, forget to take lunch breaks or take breaks in general. And it's very easy for me, especially just like being caffeinated and locked in, focused in, 
you know, six hours, eight hours could go by and I can totally skip a meal um, or, or not, not take a break. And, you know, the, the unstimulated mind is the creative mind. And so th those breaks and, and that lunch break in particular is extremely important. So I suggest always scheduling that into your actual calendar, put an actual hour in there for lunch slash break where you're purposefully not going to look at your screen or, or talk about work, or you're, that's when you're going to go take a walk. It needs to be scheduled. If you don't schedule it, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. If you want to meditate and you want to meditate twice a day, you put that in your calendar, just like you'll put, you know, this meeting or this phone call in your calendar. I think that's really important. Um, yeah. Are you gonna say oh, I was just going to say, that's great, great advice. Um, I, I think that you've done a really good job of giving people a little bit of uh, something they can look forward to in terms of gaining some agency and some control while staying connected to the world right now. Cause it is essential. It is our lifeline, right? Yeah. Now. And it's amazing little... to see this whole world, like information can be spread immediately with friends right. and stuff. And you can keep in touch with your parents if they're not in town or relatives or loved ones. And everybody's going through the same thing right now. We're all very emotional and we're all very raw and we're all very like open hearted wanting to be able to help people and share yeah. our experiences and be there for our friends. And yeah. it's great to be able to find a balance with that. I've been playing a lot of, uh, of Settlers of Catan online. <laughs> oh, really? You can do <laughs> yeah. that? That's cool. Yeah, it's super fun. But it's like an interactive thing. You know, you're like online with friends and you're playing and, and it's a different different kind of screen experience, you know. Um, but uh, I really appreciate your time today. And uh, I'd love to do this uh, every every once in a while while we're in this uh, in this lockdown and uh, yeah, let's help, do it. Help, help people keep a balance in their life. Maybe but, we uh, could do it live or something and, and answer questions or feed. Totally. Feed um, can you tell people how to go to the Brick site and uh, where the Brick Method stuff that you referenced? And if, when I post this on Facebook, I'll put some of the links that, to the news and stuff like you were talking about. Cool. Yeah, our website's gobricknow.com. When you get onto the website, you can join the community. And there's also a little survey, a quiz, where you can figure out uh, what your digital wellness score is or how in control you are of your phone use. And... From there, you can also learn about the Brick Method, which is that program I mentioned. These that I shared are kind of fun tips and tricks that are uh, can be super helpful, kind of anecdotally ad hoc. Ad hoc. But the Brick Method is a uh, if you want to make it a part of your lifestyle, there, there's a whole uh, series of tr it's a whole training where you can walk away with an actual tool that you can use to basically understand what your urges are to check your phone or check screens. We've been talking about the news in particular in this call. So what are the, what are your urges to check the news, really understand them and then learn how to beat them. And, and uh, you know, we think that it's all about willpower and grit and, and discipline, improving our habits, but it's really not, it's really just about beating the urge. And so with the brick method, we teach you how to beat the urge with this uh, practice called the brick breath, which allows you to get out of that fight flight, out of that stress response within three minutes and puts you back in control. Great. Well, I look forward to uh, being out in public and doing some of the group choirs and some of the great brick events that you got scheduled and, uh, Me too. and help, helping share it when you figure out how to do it online with people. Yeah. So thankful for you, Chris. All right, brother. Take care. Okay. All right, thanks. All right. Bye.